Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is your host, Thomas Sire from On The Hot Podcast. Today, I have some bonus content for you guys regarding the 2022 NFL Draft. So the bonus content I have for you guys, uh, with the 2022 NFL Draft officially wrapped up, I will share the top, the top three franchises, the top three teams that drafted the best during the 2022 NFL Draft from round one all the way to round seven. So honorable mention is a team that I despise, but not despise the most. A team in the NFC East that I said drafted very well and should be an honorable mention for the top three. three the top three teams I'm about to share are the New York Giants. They had one heck of a draft, absolutely hitting home run draft picks in the first round, drafting Kayvon Thibodeau, a, a dominant ed, that's going to be a dominant edge rusher, pass rusher for them for the next few years. They haven't had a dominant pass rusher since Jason Pierre Paul. Those days when the Giants won their last Super Bowl back in 2011 when they were actually a good team. Sorry to my co-host Rob, but I know he's happy with the draft selections. Kayvon Thibodeau is definitely going to help them on the defensive front. And then they got Kev, uh, Evan O'Neal from Alabama. The best, line, in my opinion, the best lineman, offensive lineman in the entire NFL draft. It's going to be interesting to see the way how the Giants are restructuring and, re and repackaging their offensive line to help Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley have success for next year. It's going to be interesting to see Evan O'Neal and Andrew Thomas on the same offensive line with each other. Two strong, young offensive linemen that has room to grow in this league. So kudos to the Giants for hitting on those uh, two first-round draft picks. And I was a fan of actually all their draft picks. So Giants are definitely an honorable mention and the top three teams I'm about to name. So at number three, I have the Philadelphia Eagles, the team I despise the most in the NFL. I actually hate them more than the Washington Commanders, but I have to say the Eagles had one hell of a draft and all their draft picks are definitely, were very valuable and it's definitely gonna help them compete. And, and they might steal, I'm not even gonna say the word compete, they might actually win the NFC East next year. The way how their draft night went, Started right off the bat, their first draft selection in the first round. They went ahead and drafted Jordan Davis, a monster defensive tackle from Georgia. Definitely one of the reasons why Georgia's defense was a stout and one of the best defenses we've seen in the last 20 or so years. One of the best, arguably one of the best uh, college defenses in college football history. Having Jordan Davis there as a defensive tackle is definitely sing signals to me and other Eagles fans and other fans around the world that love watching the NFL. That is the Eagles' next Fletcher Cox in the making. They're going to develop him. They're going to groom him to be the next Fletcher Cox in this league. The only thing to me about this pick, Jordan Davis is one heck of a defensive tackle. I think he's got to get in better shape. And uh, Georgia, I watched the tape and I watched them throughout the uh, last college football season. Jordan Davis was only a two-down defensive tackle. He was only in there for first down and second down. He was never in there for third down because, you know, and no matter what league or what level you're playing at, you always have a defensive uh, line rotation, and you always rotate your speed guys in on third down to get pass rushing and ultimately create a sack for your defense. Jordan Davis was not that guy at Georgia. I think he's still a little overweight at this moment. He's a big guy. I think he's got to get into NFL shape. The Eagles would do that for him. And he'll be one heck of a defensive tackle. <clears throat> then the following events that happened, because they were supposed to have another draft pick, they shook up their whole entire draft and traded for A.J. Brown. I said in the latest episode, episode 47, I said the Titans could possibly trade A.J. Brown. I didn't know when it was coming, but I knew that they would be finding a replacement for him in this draft. And A.J. Brown was traded to the Philadelphia Eagles. And it was immediately given a four-year uh, extension, a four-year, $100 million contract, $57 million guaranteed in the deal. So that's definitely going to help them, definitely help Jalen Hurts and give him another weapon in that Eagles offense that's going to be putting up a lot of numbers, I believe, next season. And then you have Cameron Jurgens, uh, center from Nebraska. I think he's a, a really good offensive lineman, good uh, draft selection. He's not going to start all right off the bat. But I think also that's going to be the future replacement center and a future center for the Philadelphia Eagles moving forward in the next few seasons because Jason Kelsey, a certified Hall of Famer, is up there in his late 30s and he doesn't have much. I say he has another two, three years left in the tank, but this was a good draft pick to eventually replace Jason Kelsey. And then the steal of the draft I think that the Eagles did was drafting N'Kobe Dean. Obviously, you guys know I love N'Kobe Dean. I think he's a stout linebacker. I, thought he, I believe he is the best linebacker coming out of this draft. 
it was a steal for them to get him in the third round. Obviously, he slipped all the way to the third round. For uh, the re one of the biggest reasons is he slipped during uh, all the way to the third round, having a pec injury. And the pec injury obviously happened training for the draft, training for the NFL. And instead of having surgery, he has elected to rehab the injury, which is not a smart idea. It was definitely a red flag for all franchises. And that's why he was supposed to go in the first round and plummeted all the way to the third round. Absolute steal for the Eagles. And their weakest position, I believe, all the way up to this point, on the defense was at the linebacker position. They got a good defensive line already as it is. And they got a good secondary uh, highlighted by Darius Slay, big time Slay. So definitely one hell of a draft for the Eagles. And they had one hell of an offseason. And right now it's looking like they're going to win the NFC East. I hate to admit it. Team number two, at number two, I have the Baltimore Ravens. A lot of you guys watching and listening are going to be happy with that. But I believe the Baltimore Ravens had one hell of a draft. Drafting Kyle Hamilton in the first round might go down as one of the biggest steals of this 2022 draft. Kyle Hamilton is one heck of a defensive player. I don't even think he should have slid all the way to pick 14. The man was projected to go top three, top five a month ago, a month or so ago until his draft combine. Obviously, his 40 time was not anything flashy. Pretty slow for him but for a 40 time being a safety heading into this draft. But Kyle Hamilton is going to do a wonders for this Ravens secondary. That's going to be very loaded. Coming back, all them players coming back from injury next season. Uh, the man can move around from safety. And I believe if the Ravens want to, they could probably use him as a Isaiah Simmons, the guy who's used for the Arizona Cardinals, got drafted as a safety and now used as a linebacker. So I think you got packages for Kyle Hamilton to play as a safety or position him to play linebacker if you wanted to. Then another draft steal, they got Tyler Linderbaum, center from Iowa. Um, this happened due to the fact that the Ravens did trade Hollywood Brown during draft night. Uh, got the 23rd overall pick from the Arizona Cardinals, and that's how they landed Tyler Linderbaum, safety from Iowa. Um, I think he's going to be a transcending offensive lineman in this league. One heck of an offensive lineman that the Ravens just got. So they traded Hollywood Brown and turned draft night would look like a disaster for Lamar Jackson, who was tweeting what the F in regards to trading his guy, Hollywood Brown. But they, tra they traded Hollywood Brown and made draft night really spectacular, really special. Moving forward for the Baltimore Ravens getting t Kyle Hamilton and Tyler Leonard Baum. So Ravens fans, you don't have a true number two receiver. Your number one's obviously going to be, as of right now, be Rashad Bateman heading into the season. We'll see how things happen, but definitely got to find a second receiver before this season starts. I think that's the only concern I have for the Ravens. But David Ojabu uh, might be one of the biggest steals, if not the biggest steal during this whole entire NFL draft. Uh, they got the defensive lineman, uh, defensive end from Michigan, who was a stout player last year. Obviously would have been a, a, a first rounder if it, had, if it wasn't for him tearing his Achilles during Michigan's pro day. That's so unfortunate, but the man was so happy. And you can see all the emotions uh, it was running through his mind come uh, draft day, uh, the second day of draft day when he was drafting the second round by the Baltimore Ravens. Obviously the Ravens, I think their weakest link is pass rush. He's gonna be one heck of a pass rusher for them in the future. Obviously they're gonna redshirt him. I don't think he should play at all, no matter if the Ravens go on a deep playoff run this year. They redshirt him and bring him back in with, uh, for the following season. And you're going to have one heck of a defensive end if you're the Baltimore Ravens. And then they drafted Jalen Armour Davis later on in the draft, uh, yesterday during the draft. Corner from Alabama could be a decent slot corner. Obviously, that's their favorite school of drafting DBs. Uh, that's where Marlon Humphrey is from Alabama, and they they love Alabama players. So he could one day possibly play slot for the Ravens uh, if Tavon Young is no longer a Baltimore Raven. And then Charlie Kohler, a uh, tight end from Iowa State, uh, could be useful in the double tight end packages that the Ravens do run. Could be a red zone threat for Lamar Jackson. Uh, really big as a tight end, so I like it. I like the draft pick late. Uh, and I think he, they could run a lot of tight end packages with him and Mark Andrews on the field at the same time. And then, this is a funny pick, but Jordan Stout, punter from Penn State. Best punter, in my opinion, in the draft. Obviously, Ravens fans watching and listening and NFL fans around the world know that John Harbaugh is a special teams guy. And he used that draft pick wisely to get the best punter. Special teams does matter in the NFL. It's, it's really as important as a defense. 
uh, deep, being uh, on the defensive side of the ball and being on the offensive side of the ball because special teams can get you points and it's, it's actually very important in the NFL. So it looks like Sam Cook is going to be released by training camp or before the season starts with this draft pick happening. And then the team that I absolutely thought did the absolute best drafting was the New York Jets. This franchise had an absolute home run during the draft. They have committed a highway robbery during this draft, I believe. All great selections from the front office. So let's start with the fourth overall pick in the draft, Sauce Gardner. Uh, <laughs> I predicted this. Uh, I said this would happen. Um, unfortunately for that, uh, I should have said this in the beginning of the video. Unfortunately for that, our mock drafts were pretty bad again this year. Uh, obviously, you guys didn't hear the first round of it because we practiced it before the podcast started. I actually only got two draft picks correct the whole entire first round. Shout out to my co-host Rob, who at least got five correct, five to six correct. So that's the man who was leading the charge for us mock draft. Got to do better for that next year, but I only got two right. But Sauce Gardner going to the New York Jets, I did get correctly. I think that would be their next Darrell Revis. I was actually surprised uh, Stingley Jr. went over uh, Sauce Gardner in the draft. Obviously, Stingley Jr. went third overall to the Texans. And then Sauce Gardner went right behind him. I was surprised that that happened, but they got one heck of a defensive back, and I think this is going to be their next Darrell Revis, uh, Sauce Gardner for the New York Jets. And then pick number 10, it was rumored that they were trying to shock that pick to get Debo Samuel. It didn't matter because they still got a, one heck of a wide receiver. And Garrett Wilson, in my opinion, I think he's the best wide receiver in this draft. Arguably, they just got the two best skill position players in this draft class in Sauce Gardner and in Garrett Wilson. It's going to be interesting to see these two players grow. Obviously, they're going to have some great matchups against each other. The number one corner for the New York Jets taking on the number one uh, future wide receiver for the New York Jets and Garrett Wilson. It's going to be one heck of a battle for years and years to come and, tra and uh, practice between the two. And then they traded back into the first round because Jermaine Johnson somehow, someway, fell out of the first, the first top 15 picks. Uh, I think that's ridiculous that Jermaine Johnson slipped that far in this draft class. But the Jets traded back into the first round and drafted Jermaine Johnson. Absolute steal as an edge rusher. And he had 12 sacks in his senior year with Florida State. Actually, I did my research. I didn't even notice this. Until I, I heard his name again. This man is a former Last Chance U player. For that for guys who used to watch the show Last Chance U on Netflix years ago. Uh, he was a part of the team with the uh, with Coach B. Coach B, yeah. Years and years ago. And I'm very surprised that I didn't realize that when I was talking about that in last week's episode. But Jermaine Johnson shouldn't have slid that far. So they got one. They had the arc. No hand. No damn. No. No doubts about that, that they had the best draft night, uh, at least round one. That Again, Sauce Gardner, Jermaine Johnson, and Garrett Wilson. And then they turn around and have one heck of a uh, night two. And the uh, second round getting Brees Hall, a monster running back. Uh, I think this is the best running back in this draft class. I think he, he can make plays running the ball and receiving the ball. He's one heck of a player. And the comparison that I think Brees Hall reminds me of, of a running back that's in the league right now that he compare that compares up to him is Jonathan Taylor. Obviously, John T Jonathan Taylor is the best future could be the best running back in the league in the next season or so. Obviously, fantasy owners he is going to be the best running back in fantasy owners' eyes. But Brees Hall actually compares uh, right up to Jonathan Taylor to me, and this was one heck of a pick because now the Jets have their true number one running back for years to come in Brees Hall. So that sets up the Jets offense perfectly because now they have Zach Wilson, who will be in his second year at the quarterback position. They have Brees Hall at running back. You have Michael Carter, who they drafted last year at the running back position, running back number two. You now have at receiver, you have Corey Davis. You have Elijah Moore, who they drafted last year in the second round from Ole Miss. And now you have Garrett Wilson. They're, heck, they're setting up one heck of an offense that could run things for years and years to come in the NFL. As they keep building up this team like this, they could the Jets could be one heck of a team in the AFC in the next few years. So I think they drafted well. I think the front office definitely deserves a lot of kudos. Jets fans are definitely going to be happy. 
But those are the top three team, the top three teams I really believe that drafted the best on draft night. Again, at three, the Eagles, at two, the Baltimore Ravens, and at one, the New York Jets. But that is all the time I have for you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. It's your time Tyrese signing out. I'll see you guys on next week's episode.